This is why we drink. This week on Lift Dark Builds, we finished the conference table. <laughs> Welcome back. It's a rainy Saturday here in Roanoke. I'm down here at the shop, been working on a few things. I have cleared my table and I'd like to keep working on this conference table. So here are all my parts. I've got one side pretty much done. The other side needs all the four corners welded and cleaned up. And then uh, a little bit more work on the stretcher and then I can bolt everything together. Do some final finish sanding, you know, even out the finish of the, the mill scale and the metal and then paint it and we're done with the base and then I can move on with the top. Um, like I mentioned in a recent video, the most recent plasma video, the uh, top I hope to make out of all this stuff. It's all leftover wood from the old mezzanine that was up there. A few other things It came out of this building. So it was old stuff that uh, was here in the machine shop. So I just thought it'd be cool to do wooden top from old materials that were here and a new metal base cut from my plasma table and uh, some two inch flat bar. So that's enough talking. I'm gonna get this stuff down from here, put it on the table and start working. The other side I've welded and ground the corners and softened it. So now I need to do that to this side. All welded up. Everything is as square and as flat as I can get it. Clean it up, bolt it back together because I haven't seen this thing assembled in a while and I kind of want to see it back together. And um, then I can start thinking about the top because I don't yet know if I want to paint the base or just clear coat it, rust it out, leave it out in the weather for a while, get a rust finish. I'm the customer here, so I get to decide whatever the hell I want to do. But time to clean and assemble. It is raining so hard. Just figured I'd show you. Gosh, it was so beautiful this morning. Now look. Anywho, grinding's done, cleanup's done. I'm going to final assemble this uh, table base. Here we go. Um, a lot of the final cleanup I did with this guy, it's a 90 degree die grinder with a uh, sanding disc on it. This is slowly becoming my favorite tool. These are useful for everything. Because most die grinders with the carbide bits are a little too violent. And uh, you can't always get these into little tight spaces. So it's nice to have something smaller. Size is not everything. God, it's a thunderstorm. Can you guys hear that? I haven't had a good thunderstorm in a while. Let me give you a tour of what everything looks like so far. So tried to make the welds evenly spaced because they're gonna be visible. So I'd like it to be pretty, you know, reasonably aesthetically pleasing. But yeah, so that's the table base assembled. Yay, we did it. I might switch gears and start looking at all the wood that I have. Cause right here, I, I wanna do basically a seven foot by 40 inch table. Steve and I stood in the conference room or the office, same thing, it's all one room. We stood in there and just played with a tape measure and sort of figured out how big the table could be without impending, impeding, sorry, the flow of the space and getting in the way. So it was about seven feet long and 40 or so, not quite four inches, but a four feet, but a little bit bigger than three feet. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. And obviously I could just cut a piece of four by eight plywood, cut that down, 
route the edges, clear coat everything, and there you go, a tabletop. But uh, for whatever reason, I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment and I wanna make things go that, just that little extra. Because if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Let's play with some wood. I have my helper here to help clean up the pieces. Ready? Go get it. almost six o'clock on Saturday. Battery's almost dead on the GoPro. And uh, no real need to work any later than this on a Saturday, right? I don't know. I haven't talked myself out of it completely yet. But here's where we're at. We've got a decent little pile of material, some stack that you can't see. And we have, of course, the base. Welcome to where I used to work. So this is the wood shop, Black Dog Salvage. Um, before I left, we did a video series on YouTube called Black Dog Builds. Check that out, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. And obviously if you've seen the TV show Salvage Dogs, this is where we filmed all the builds. Pretty fun. But what I gotta do is use these two pieces of equipment here. This is a 12 inch helical head joiner. Uh, which will give me flat edges. It helps you join wood together, hence the name. And then this is a planer, which will flatten the top and bottom. So these two machines will help make those boards nice and flat and square and dimensional. And then we'll use a domino, to, uh, which is like a biscuit joiner, to, to join them together. We'll glue them, we'll clamp them, and then we'll let all the glue dry and we'll see how carried away I get. So planer, uses a big cutting head. There's 175 individual teeth on this. Ask me how I know. I used to have to change them all. <clears throat> but what it'll do is it'll, you run your board through here and it takes a certain amount of material off the top surface. And you just keep doing that until you get your board to the right thickness. The important thing though is to get your board flat and know, get the curve out of it with the joiner before you run it through the planer because the joiner will make it straight this just changes the thickness. So this will make it thinner, but it won't take any curve out of it. You have to do that on the joiner. But I'm just gonna try to knock some of this material out of the way, and then we'll go back to the joiner. So I noticed a few things, one, there's some metal washers still in here. They're way down low, but I definitely got to pull those out. Kind of glad I didn't send it through the table saw actually, because that would have been very bad. Good God. God knows how old that washer is. There we go. Should I try to split it? All right. It was gonna split there anyway, so now we got two boards. I had one board, now I have two. So I gotta reduce these. I might, now that they're half the size, I'm gonna run them on the joiner, cut them on this table saw.
So now we can go through the planer because we got a good flat bottom. So I'll do that to the rest of them. This one's gonna be pretty. Look at that. That's oak. on the table saw because just because I ran them through the joiner doesn't mean the two sides are parallel. Mm -hmm. They might be flat, but they're not. So we got to use the table saw. Woodworking. Instead of taking this much material off on the planer, pass after pass after pass, we just cut it off. Now we gotta run them back through here because one side is joined and the other side is not, and they're not parallel. So as soon as we do this, all the boards should be flat up against each other and flat on the bottom. So then all we gotta do is run them through the planer to make them all the same thickness and then we'll be able to glue them together. We're gonna to get rid of that kind of thing. Yeah, so throughout that whole process, we lost two and a half inches. So now we have three sides that are flat and square, and that's where we're at now. <coughs> yeah. A little bit of wood dust. This is why I like metalworking. There's dust in that too, it's just a different kind of dust. Was productive. So now, I know it's a shame that all that patina is largely gone, but all of this is pine, uh, except for this board, which is red oak. You can tell it's red oak by the way it is. No, I mean, it is red and it's oak, and I know that just because I'm familiar with it. It's oak is much tighter grain. It's a lot heavier and more dense. It'd be amazing if the tabletop was all oak, but. It's all right. So these are weaker because they have cracks in them. So you don't want these to be in the middle because they'll, they'll snap. So the closer these are to the outside, the less load they'll have on them. He said load. Get a load of this guy. So this is basically a biscuit joiner uh, and a domino machine basically do the same thing. So what it's gonna do is cut an oval hole halfway into here and an oval hole halfway into here. And then you use these dominoes, they call them, for obvious reasons, they kind of look like them. And they will go into the corresponding holes that line up, you put glue everywhere, and then you slam them together. So there's pegs, basically, holding all the boards in the same line. It'll make more sense in a minute. <clears throat>
Pretty simple now. We just go glue crazy. Come back to our dominoes. And we set our first joint. I remember this being easier. Why you no go? That'll happen. I'm rushing. Slow down. Suck it up. BlackDogSalvage.com. Someone will be sweating and cussing on your tabletop just like this. We're running out of time! <laughs> yeah. I'm giving it all she's got. <laughs> now it's just a game of whack-a-mole. <clears throat> I'm running out of clamp again. You can never have too many clamps. to enjoy the table, I do. But we did it for you. <sighs> this is why we drink. All right, back from Black Dog. Got the tabletop in the back of the truck. Gonna back it in, unload it, set it up on some saw horses and take a good look at it. Start sanding. Came out pretty good. We got our length. It's definitely seven feet long, but we ended up at around 37 inches wide instead of 40. But that's okay. I wanted to just use 100% of the wood I saved from the shop, and I didn't want to have to add anything else to it. If I wanted to, I could rip it down the middle and add like a metal strip or a piece of metal tubing or something that'd be kind of cool, being that this is a metal shop but uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it because I'm not getting paid for this one. This is just a passion project and it's gonna serve just fine as a tabletop.
Dude, it's the perfect height. Yeah. Okay, and I need to decide whether I want to paint the base or clean it and clear coat it. It's all coming together. I have Stella without May today, so I can't tell if she misses her sister or if she's just tired or what. You miss May? Hmm? You're okay. Anywho, let's finish this table. We'll fill the cracks with resin. Once it dries, we'll sand it, and then I'm gonna put this like natural sort of beeswax oil finish on it, food safe finish. Really easy to apply, much easier than like a clear coat or a stain or something. And it'll darken the wood quite a bit, so it'll look good. The one thing I have to do for sure is drill holes in this top flange so that I can mount the top. So we'll do that. And then, uh, then we'll clean it up. Box of rags, acetone. Let's clean this bad boy. It's almost two. We need to get this video out in an hour or so. Um, so this is where we're gonna leave it. After the resin dries here, I'm gonna sand it all flat, and then we're gonna use like a beeswax uh, food safe seal coat. I'm clear coating the base over here. I decided to clear coat it so that we could see the raw metal, but uh, customers want a table like this. They can see it in the showroom and online. And then uh, I've got a rendering of it because I designed it on Fusion so I can apply different colors there to envision it in, in paint. Tune in next week. We'll do another build. We'll start another build or something. But uh, you'll see the final product in the beginning of that video because we'll do the intro to that video at the new conference table. So. Subscribe and stuff. <laughs> See you next week.